landing technique will be auto thrust on braking action loop. Well, I want to show you why this is not possible, but let us set it to low for now and reverses. Yes. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to talk about tire burst on the Airbus A320 and how do we deal with it. First off is to recognize that you have a tire burst. In a car, it is easy to know that your tire is flat. On a plane, well, it is a whole different story. There are six ways that you can detect a tire burst. The easiest way to know is that if you have the information from the air traffic control that notice that you have a tire burst. Number two is when you have a bang noise. No, not that kind of bang noise. It's what you hear when you're rolling down the runway. Sometimes it can be hard to detect. A loud noise can also come from other sources like the engine, etc. Number three is that if you're taxiing or rolling down the runway, suddenly you get an uncommanded door. You have to make abrupt tweaks to maintain directional control. The next one is pretty simple. If your aircraft has a system installed, a wheel tire low pressure ECAM alert will trigger. But bear in mind that this ECAM alert may not trigger if the debris has already damaged the tire pressure sensor. Another indication is also when the wheel system display page shows amber double axis for the tire pressure indication. And yes, this indication is only available if you have this optional system installed in your app. The last indication is if you have damage on your brakes, maybe your slats or flaps. This could be due to a tire burst when the debris of the tires causes subsequent damage to other parts of the plane. Now, what is the number one effect of this failure? If you have a tire burst, what is your main concern? The main thing you need to worry about is landing distance. Can you land this plane on a runway that is long enough? In order to determine the landing distance, we will use our trusty EFB landing performance software by Airbus. We will take 66 tons as our reference weight. So I will pick an airport that is close to 4,000 meters of runway. Wind we select calm, as calm as Airbus captains. Temperature we set at 30 degrees Celsius, as hot as my grandpa. And QNH is 1010, the perfect amount of pressure your wife gives you daily. Runway condition, braking action is good, but we can try braking action medium later to simulate slippery wet runway you know what they say dangerous when wet nti is off well this is not a frozen story landing weight we take it at 66 tons cg above 27 landing config full aircon on approach type normal go around gradient at 2.5 percent and no increment speed from the pilot landing technique will be auto thrust on braking action loop well i want to show you why this is not possible, but let us set it to low for now and reverses. Yes. Okay, folks, let us select the defect, which is one tire burst. So click on Ecamm and select break one release and let's compute. You will get an error. Well, now you know. Auto brake system is inoperative for this Ecamm alert. You have to select manual mode in this condition. Let's change the brake mode to manual. Okay, so with one tire burst or one brake release, we require 2,000 meters of runway. Let's go further. The devil is in the details. We will calculate 66 tons, two brake release, and see what we get. Factored landing distance is about 2,200 meters. Now let's have some fun with three brake release. You will require 2,800 meters of runway. This is for braking action that is good. Let's change the braking action to medium now. You would get 3,500 meters factored landing distance. Does this make you realize something? Yes, 3,500 meters factored and 3,000 meters unfactored is the required distance to land at 66 tons for green and yellow dual hydraulic failure. So having three tire bursts is equivalent to having two important green and yellow hydraulic failures when it comes to how much distance you need to land. So the question you might ask is, what is four main tire bursts? Well, the software says you probably need close to 5,000 meters of runway and a maximum landing weight of 55 tons is ideal for landing. If you are able to burn fuel and be lighter before you land, then you can reduce the amount of runway you need. 
Foaming the runway for fear of fire is now discouraged and it would eat up a lot of landing distance. Once you land, you need to ask yourself, can you taxi? You are sitting in the cockpit so you have no idea how your tires look like. And so you would need to ask the airport authorities to perform an inspection before you taxi. Of course, if you have the tire pressure indication installed in your plane, then you can identify which tire is kaput. What are the limitations? If one tire per gear is deflated, meaning three wheels deflated, the taxi speed is seven knots. If two tires are deflated on the same main gear, then the taxi speed is three knots. Make sure when you are using the nose wheel steering, the maximum angle is 30 degrees. How do you know that if it is 30 degrees? The steering handwheel position is on the third graduation or the steering handwheel position in the middle of the second and third graduation with pedals fully deflected in the same direction. Well, if in doubt, just request for tow truck assistance. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.